Hi guys, it's nice to be back with another tutorial and this time I'm going to teach you how to do monoline lettering. It means that we're not going to be using brush pens or any nibs as we usually do in calligraphy but we're going to use a very fine tip pen that has a monoline tip so basically you can't achieve like a different pressure with that pen you can't go thicker or thinner it just stays the same <laughs> so that's what we call monoline and it certainly has its place it can look really really simple easy to read and nice it's also really good for practicing lettering flow because you don't have to focus on pressure changes which as you already know can be a little bit hard <laughs> so i'm going to share a few bouncy lettering tips to help you get started then we're going to practice some monoline lettering and at the end i'm just going to show you how you can use monoline pens to draw some lovely botanical element and then we're going to combine them with lettering it's going to be really pretty i hope you're ready to practice with me so let's get started so in this lesson we're going to practice bouncy lettering style and i'll just show you some very simple techniques that you can start applying to your lettering or writing just to make it a bit more playful and I'm going to be using this micron pen which is a monoline pen so all the strokes are going to be the same which is lovely because you can fully relax and just kind of think about your flow rather than focusing and applying pressure which is something that we need to do in calligraphy when lettering with nibs or brush pens for example so now is your time to relax and just fully focus on the actual lettering so this one is in size 05, they do come in different sizes and I'll add the link for you so you can always get this yourself. These are such lovely pens, I love drawing with them, I love lettering with them and they just make everything look so good. <laughs> so I highly, highly recommend these. So let's begin by kind of focusing on certain letters which can help us to develop a very lovely bouncy lettering style so those letters are for example the letter m it's a classic letter you can begin practicing to make your letters look more playful and what we're going to do with this letter is we're going to divide it into a few parts so we've started here and this is my first part of the letter m then we're going to do the second one pick up the pen again and when you do the last one which is this we're going to bring it up and down so now this is what i've done here let's try this again so three parts to this this is the first one doing the second one kind of stopping a bit higher up and then going up and down lovely bound i'm going to zoom in in the next one so starting with a lovely entry stroke second part and a lovely stroke up and down there we are you can see there's a lot of bounds so all we've done we've taken this last down stroke all the way down before we brought it back up so imagine it connects to another letter here so we're kind of trying to vary the height that's what makes it look interesting right let's try another letter which is the letter n so very similar to be honest so two parts to this we're going to pick up our pen here and when you do the second part we're going to bounce it down in exactly the same way so starting with the first part we'll pause before we do the second part and just do this a few more times and every time you do it try to do it a bit quicker because when you are lettering with these pens i find that those quick movements are actually very useful because they make your word just flow a bit better but that doesn't mean that you don't need to make pauses so still pause but kind of get into a rhythm of it all if that makes sense right let's try another letter we can also do the same thing with the letter h so this is the first part of the letter and when we do the second one we're going to bounce that down stroke all the way down and then use the last up stroke to bring the letter back up so if we had a baseline here so imagine this is where the letter is beginning so imagine if you have a baseline going through here so the first part sits in the baseline and the second part is bouncing down so just try kind of get used to that idea which can be really hard to be honest at first 
But once you get used to this, it's going to start happening naturally, I promise. Right, let's try to do the same thing with the letter A. So I've done the first part, which is kind of like the C shape or O shape. And pick up your pen there and then just start an extra going down and up. Lovely movement. Try not to overthink it. And the last letter we're going to practice here is the letter D. So we're kind of applying the same technique to all of these letters. So this is the first part of the letter. Pick up your pen and then start the second part kind of here with this upstroke and then go down with this downstroke just like we've done in all of these examples. There we are. So maybe let's try and practice this technique and apply it to actual words. So maybe let's have a go at lettering the days of the week. So that's just quite a lovely thing to do. So let's go ahead and just start with Monday, just do all seven days. And let's try and focus on the technique we just practiced. And if you do see any of those letters, just remember to bounce them down. Remember that all of the days of the week are capitalized, so you're going to start with a capital letter. Right, so let's begin with the word Monday. So I'm doing the letter M, just like we've practiced, picking up my pen frequently, keeping the letter O a bit smaller, reaching the letter N, and I'm going to go all the way down and back up again. Have a pause, do the letter D, and again, add a bit of bounce. Let's keep the letter A a bit smaller and higher up. And let's finish with the letter Y kind of naturally, just the way you do it. Do try to extend the last stroke of the word. It always looks really, really good. Right, let's do the word Tuesday. So starting with a capital T, I'm going to kind of detach it from the rest of the word, but still position it very close. So there we are, so the letter U. A bit of bounce, the letter E, let's keep it higher up, make the letter S nice and big, the letter D with a lovely bounce again, I'm going to bounce the letter A, so bringing it all the way down, and again finishing with the letter Y, I'll just let it flow down. Very good, so the word Wednesday is very long, but you've got this. <laughs> Let's try this together. So, capital W. Just try to copy me here. Let's keep the letter E nice and small. Do the letter D just the way we've practiced already. Nice and low and coming back up. The letter N in a similar style. I do tend to keep my letters A and E quite small. And then if I have the letter S in my word, I always try to make it a bit bigger. Right, so... I was chatting too much here, so I kind of lost it a bit. <laughs> but yeah, I did my letter D here. And I'm going to bounce the letter A again. There we are. Let's do the word Thursday and just try to kind of find your own flow here. Remember to bounce those letters we've practiced individually. When I do the letter R, I love making this first loop very big. It adds a lovely contrast. Definitely something you can try. Just a little tip. Hopefully you'll walk away with this tutorial. There's just a few more techniques and tips. And the word Friday, who doesn't love a Friday? Right, gonna do the letter F like this. Fairly simple, trying to keep it that minimalistic style. Let's stretch the letter R from there, nice and big. And then the rest is gonna be fairly small. So again, bouncing those large downstrokes of each letter, almost every single letter. Lovely, and the word Saturday, here we are, the weekend. 
nice and lovely letter S, so nice and big. And I'm trying to keep it all kind of tied together. It's quite a long word. Still adding a lot of character, still bouncing everything. But kind of being a bit more mindful here because I do need to pick up my pen very often. Lovely and a nice cross line. It's always like a cherry on top, so you can always work with your cross lines and make them nice and wavy, nice and big. And my favorite day of the week is Sunday. Love this word. So nice and big letter S. Adding a bit of bounce to the letter U. Maybe keeping the letter D a bit smaller. There we are. So there we go. All seven words. Try to practice these. Try to do them fairly quickly so you kind of just get to the rhythm. If you go too slowly, sometimes you'll just get stuck. And just like I did here, where I paused for a long time, <laughs> so I kind of lost track. So do make frequent pauses, but make them very short. So that's the best tip I can give you. And I just want to show you another thing you can do with these pens, which is really, really exciting. You can actually draw some very simple elements and they'll just look really, really pretty. So I'll just show you a few of my favorites at the moment. It is autumn at the moment, so I'm really enjoying drawing all the botanicals, doing little doodles. So I'll just show you what I've been up to really. So my favorite at the moment is just this very simple bunch of flowers. So you would start with this kind of outer flower, so the petals, and then you'd add the middle and then a little stem and just do a few of these. So kind of starting it here, adding a little middle and then maybe adding a few leaves. I'm just doing like the outline of the leaf and then adding a little line that goes through like this and maybe let's add one more so this can look really cute just very simple but I'm telling you everything you do with this pen will look good just make sure that you do finish your started project because chances are it's already looking really really good right and let's try drawing a little rose so that's another thing I've been enjoying so Let's try and do this little kind of spiral in the middle and then start kind of adding these petals and kind of layer them. So now that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing this like wavy line, starting at one point and just finishing like further up or further down. So in this case up here and then starting another one just kind of randomly. The only thing I would say, try to bear in mind that you know your rose probably wants to be round <laughs> so try to kind of keep that round shape as much as you can and if you wanted to you could add a bit more kind of color right in the middle not color but just kind of make this center of the rose a bit darker and then you can add a stem and maybe do some lovely leaves again starting with the outline and then just kind of adding on do some smaller ones something like this really so this can look really really pretty as well another thing I really love is just doing this sort of shape where I do the stem first and then I do this kind of upside down triangle that's attached to the stem and then I just add on these like little oval shapes at the top like three of them connecting at the same spot I love to dot these triangle shapes. Let's do another one. And it's always nice to add little leaves as well. You could also try doing something like this where you kind of draw the base 
do this shape first, like a little cup. And then you just start adding on like lots of petals. You can keep some of them a bit more round if you like. Then you can blend in some at the back as well, just to make it a bit more full. And then you can add a stem and just make your leaves a bit bigger. So you can start with the outline like this. And then from the same point, you can go up and do this little line. So it can all be like one movement like this. Give it a go. Again, because you're doing it fairly quickly and in one movement, it will probably flow much better than if you're doing it slowly. And then just like some simple things, you can always try just doing a few berries like this. Or you can do the one where you start with the U shape, then find the center, add a few berries, and then maybe add some more from the sides, from the same base. And so the simple ones also include kind of like a little lavender shape. So this always looks really good. Or you can try like another like leaf type, maybe something like this, where you just keep adding like lots of the small ones with like very wavy lines. This can look quite good. Try not to worry too much about being precise. It's all part of it really. We do want it to look a bit messy in a way. Right, so here are just a few ideas. And the reason I'm showing this to you is because you can combine monoline lettering with these lovely, lovely botanical drawings. Now I'll just show you a few examples just to inspire you a bit and you can have a go yourself and let me know how you're getting on. So we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to start and finish the word with like a longer stroke. So like this. So a long, long entry and exit stroke. And now we can use these as little stems. So we can actually add on some of these flowers we've practiced. So that's a lot of fun. So give that a go. So this can look really cute. So sometimes I also love just adding like three little dots. Imagine that this is like pollen flying around your flowers. Um, so yeah, this could like be a really nice word to use in journaling, for example. Just a quick little example. And I love the word Sunday, so I might just do that as well. Again, a very long entry stroke. And a very long exit stroke. Let's say I wanted to do like a little lavender leaf here. You can get creative, blend in one of the roses here if you want. That looks quite nice, I think. So let's do a similar thing here. Just adding these little lavender leaves on the sides here. And then blending in a little rose. So quite tight in the middle and then starting to make these petals a bit bigger, just a bit chunkier. Blend in a little leaf. I'm going to aim for three on this side as well. Nice. So just a few ideas for you. I hope you enjoy experimenting. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I'm so happy to have you here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and if you feel like you want to practice a bit more, have a look at my other tutorials. See you next time. Bye bye bye.